Good morning, everybody, and uh, sorry about that. I was at the back of church and realised that the live stream is starting. So here we are in All Saints, and there is the table. Our worship will begin in about four or five minutes' time, uh, so I'll leave you to look at the table with the music playing in the background. And at 11.30, uh, wherever you are, you'll be very welcome to worship with us. And yesterday when I was mentioning all the countries... Of course, I forgot Colombia, where Raphael is joining us from. Wherever you are, uh, I hope you'll join us for our worship, which will be a said Eucharist, and it'll begin in about four minutes' time.
So now I say good morning to you here, and I say good morning to you there. Uh, for some of you, it's the first time back in All Saints. All Saints has been waiting for you. And thank God, thank you God, that we are here. So for those of you who it's the first Eucharist, just a uh, small introduction. Yeah, sadly, you've got to look at me wearing the face masks. I don't wear the face mask throughout the service. I will wear it when I come around to distribute the Eucharist in one kind. And I will take the Eucharist in two kinds. At that point, I will, for about the third time in the service, sanitise my hands. Having sanitised the hands, I will then bring the the host to you at your seats, having not touched the host before. It's in a plastic sleeve. Count them out without touching them. And that means we can take the Eucharist at least in one kind together. So you just stay exactly where you are, and I can run to you. Simple as that. And actually, the most important thing is that we are here, and we're going to worship God. It's exactly the service that we're used to. Um, and people at home, you're going to be able to follow the worship, uh, God willing, and BT Internet willing. The words will be showing on your screens at home as well. But now, we've come to worship God. Let's do it. I greet you all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And so as we join together in God's house, let's pray together the bidding prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us recall our human imperfections. And let's give thanks that God so loved the world that he gave his only son Jesus Christ to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. So let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Let's confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us pray our collect for this day. O oh God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the second letter of St. Paul to the church in Thessalonia. And we're reading verses from the third chapter. 
So Paul writes, Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labour we worked night and day, so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command, anyone unwilling to work should not eat. Now may the God of peace himself give you peace at all times, in all ways. The Lord be with all of you. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. This is the mark in every letter of mine. It is the way I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You will. Please stand for the Holy Ghost. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus is speaking. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside look beautiful, but inside they are full of the bones of the dead and of all kinds of filth. So you also, on the outside, look righteous to others, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous, and you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Thus, you testify against yourselves that you are descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your ancestors. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please. That was quite a message from Jesus. I think we'll go to the uh, Acts of the uh, the letter of Saint Paul to Thessalonia for the text, and we'll we'll just nip very briefly into the Holy Gospel as part of our reflection. There's a beautiful uh, verse in uh, that part of Saint Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonia. Paul writes, "Now may the Lord of Peace Himself." Give you peace at all times, in all ways. Very briefly, let's think about those words of Paul and contrast between the Holy Gospel and uh, Paul's words to the people of the church in Thessalonica. In the Holy Gospel, Jesus is on the attack. And yet again, it's the, the Pharisees, it's the leaders of the established church. The ones who, instead of welcoming the Messiah and 
helping him and assisting, just as Paul exhorted the people of the church in Thessalonica to do, work just as he said he, Paul, used to work. He didn't expect food for no reward, uh, having done nothing. He expected food as a reward for, for working. And you might have expected that the leaders of the established church would have been the same, welcoming the Messiah and working with him. But no, 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 it was absolutely the opposite. And so Jesus uses the example of the beautiful tombs from the outside. If ever you've traveled in the, the Middle East or the Holy Land, you'll know that in that part of the world, they're painted beautifully white on the outside. Those if you go inside, there are creepy crawlies and spiders and there'll be a bad smell. And Jesus made the point that it's not what you see from the outside that matters, it's what you see inside. The Vicruit Garden this year, a wash with tomatoes, thanks to Irish Wheeler's sage advice about planting cherry tomatoes, and also a wash with cucumbers. And because of the way the weather's been, some of those cucumbers grew like, like turnips. And the problem is, yeah, they look wonderful on the outside, but... You know, you gardeners yourselves, I know, you know what they were like inside. They were pretty rotten. You know, a little bit round the outside, and then heaps of seeds and not very tasty at all. They looked great from the outside, but not from the inside. When, when we arrived in Harrow Weald last year, Ella and I were delighted. We love watermelons. And we saw that the, uh, the Middle East shops down towards Wealdstone had those great big fruits, and we asked, are they sweet? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, they said. Cut them open. No. What you see from the outside is nothing. It's what is inside that matters. Because the watermelon, the cucumber can look beautiful. But if there's no taste, no food value, then it's just a waste. And that's exactly what Jesus was saying in the, in the Holy Gospel. And Paul gives us the antidote to that problem in his letter, how to avoid being rotten inside. He said, share everything. Don't expect to be given. Take pleasure in giving. You know, I was deeply disappointed when we weren't able to open the church during the lockdown because Thanks to Miss Irish Wheeler. I had masses of little tomato plants. I would have loved to put in the, the church door and give them and maybe a little message. If you like the tomatoes, pop a pound in the, uh, in the church plate. Yep, it's a joy to give. And don't worry, there's more to come because I tried the same trick with um, chili peppers. One chili pepper, I've got 42 growing waiting to come in the church porch when we restart a week on Sunday and we'll be able to share to share what we have if we have in abundance let's give in abundance why? well Paul said it's through giving and sharing that we get peace in our soul it's through giving and sharing that if we are cut open it's not a rotten manky cucumber what would it be? the peace of the Lord coming out of us. Peace in our souls. That's what makes the difference between something that's whitewashed and is horrible inside and something which is whitewashed and is a welcoming home inside. It's not the external experience, it's what's inside that matters. All that glitters is not gold. That's the old saying. And it reminds me of the first time, I must have been only about eight, I made a mail order purchase. It was a little ad in one of the national newspapers. And it described that radio that you plugged into a TV aerial. The channels it would have got, oh, they were incredible. I waited and waited and waited for the postman to bring it. And when it arrived, it was just in a, a little envelope, about that big. You plugged it into the aerial. And that was it. All that glittered most certainly was not gold. The marketing hype was incredible, but in reality, the value was minimal. 
Now, why is that important? It is because God sees right through us. He sees through the marketing hype. He sees through the skin of the cucumber and the watermelon. He knows us as well and even better than we know ourselves. And we, we know the difference between having peace in our soul and being discontented and nervous and disappointed with ourselves. Paul gives wonderful advice. He said we can have peace in our souls at any time and all we have to do is seek that peace from the God of peace. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in all ways. Very simple prayer and exaltation. Equally, it's a wonderful way to live our lives. Amen. And now let us pray. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Let us thank God for his grace. Dear loving Heavenly Father, as we return to this your house, we give you thanks. We thank you that we are here. We thank you that we are able to move around carefully, but we are able to, to get around. We thank you that as we enter this your house, we can feel your peace. May your peace fill us, stay with us, and may we share your peace when we leave this your place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we worship here, we pray now for our families and our friends and members of our congregation who are not here. Some joining us and worshipping with us using the wonders of internet technology. Lord, may your peace be with those we love, be with the members of our parish, be with those who worship with us in many countries around the world. May we understand the difference between being shallow and being true to you and to ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we remember different people and different communities who particularly need your comfort and support at this time. We pray for our own country as a new generation of young people prepare to start school, return to school, begin university and college, or return to their places of study. Lord, help us to know the best way in which we can help this new generation to learn. We pray for those who must make decisions about the best and safest ways in which education can be provided. Lord, guide them and inspire them. And be with parents and carers as they worry about what is safe for their children and for those who they love dearly. May your peace be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for people around the world, all affected by coronavirus and others with their lives affected by 
tragedies. Prepare for the people of Lebanon, rebuilding their lives after the horrible explosion. We pray for the people of Belarus, seeking a way in which they can live in peace and in harmony. And we pray for the people of the United States of America, especially in Wisconsin. Lord, may we show in our lives that all lives matter. Black lives matter. All lives matter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, in these prayers, we remember those from our parish who have particular need of your comfort and support at this time. By name, we remember Jane Slade, Claire Rawdy, Emma Foss, Laura Baker, Janice Glasser, Margaret Vinter, Doug Garrett, Roger Siswick, Anne Nash, and Kevin Briody. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. been talking about peace in our reflection this morning. Jesus told us that he is our peace. It is he who reconciled us to God in one body by his sacrifice on the cross. And we meet now in his name and we can share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with me. I'm waving to you all a sign of peace and to you guys wherever you are they're all waving a sign of peace to you as well in your homes and now we prepare the table for the Eucharist Thank you, Lord God, of our creation, to your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. He will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, to your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. He will become our spiritual good. Blessed be God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him 
You have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him, you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. So we live. Same night as we prayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And now as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread, we share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We say the Agnes Day. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. 
draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. On our behalf, I take his blood, which he shed for us. So eat in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. And for those at home, the prayer of the act of spiritual communion is there. I commend it to you to pray as we share the Eucharist. You may see it, hold your hand by that. I will be dropping the water into it. Let us pray. Lord of all mercy, we, your faithful people, have celebrated that one true sacrifice which takes away our sins and brings pardon and peace. By our communion, keep us firm on the foundation of the gospel and preserve us from all sin. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those who you love, wherever they may be, today and always. Amen. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. But don't go quite yet, not for a moment, so that I can say thank you to you all for being here and to all of you, wherever you are. Thank you for joining our worship. We appreciate it. They, they can't see what I'm seeing and I can't see you, so we're all the same. Uh, it's just the screen looking back at me. Thank you all for being with us. There'll be live stream worship every day the rest of this week. Tomorrow I think it's evening, right? Um, yes. Yes, we'll certainly see you tomorrow.
And our next service in church will be a week today. We'll have said Eucharist again. And then hopefully, a week on Sunday, there'll be even more of the red tape removed and even more red tape up, and we'll be worshipping in the whole church for our Sunday worship. Uh, for all of you here and here, uh, I'll share information as we get it, but that is our prayerful plan. Uh, Eucharist 11.30 next Wednesday, and then uh, Parish Eucharist on Sunday 6th of September at 10 o'clock. So now, we will do Go in peace, love and serve the Lord. I'll be standing outside. If you want to send me the distance, 